Planet Earth is a global village. We're in touch as never before. We observe our world from space. We monitor countryside and city. And we communicate with anywhere on Earth. Chatter and data, a network linked from orbit. From satellite, dishes catch radio and TV. We watch images from across the world and from worlds beyond, like Mars. Kids' cartoons and global news. Telecommunication bathes the planet. Via satellite, we can track a taxi cab or a car on a freeway. And that driver can pinpoint direction, distance and position. All thanks to a web of global positioning satellites. For shipping, they're a boon. More reliable than navigating by the heavens. Strictly speaking, the moon is our only satellite. These are artificial satellites. In this case, so-called remote sensors. They monitor the resources of Earth. In farming, they detect gluts and shortages. Crop cycles are schematically mapped. In spring, red shows young growth. The rest bear soil. Midsummer and the red is burgeoning fields of cereal. Autumn and green depicts harvested crops. Satellites spot the need to irrigate. In two images over two years, the left is dry and poor crops, the right water and plenty. Satellite imagery is a vivid overview. It makes for good harvests and effective distribution. And satellites aid pest control, like locusts that can strip crops in minutes. In these images of equatorial Africa, yellow reveals damp areas where locusts lay eggs. By targeting such breeding grounds, pesticide cuts crop damage. From satellite, cloud tracks reveal wind direction, the cycles of hot air rising and cold air falling that drive our weather. If heavy cloud is on the way, when will it rain tomorrow? Weather satellites provide hourly time lapse. For meteorologists, an evolving pattern on which to base their forecasts. Accurate predictions are important for bad weather. Snow plows must be ready, runways cleared, planes de-iced. For vessels in coastal waters, will calm become rough? And for deep sea fishermen, will rough become storm? Thunderstorms are easily spotted from orbit. With yellow and orange as indicators, a map of lightning flashes is invaluable in forecasting. The most intense storms spawn tornadoes. They funnel downwards from thunderclouds, whirling at vast speed. The narrow track of a tornado wreaks havoc. Less ferocious but much bigger are tropical storms. Raging in from the Atlantic, they're known as hurricanes. Satellites show where they'll hit and where damage will be, not least coastal flooding. But inland flooding causes more devastation. Torrential rain swells rivers. And because lots of us live in the floodplains of rivers, flooding can be catastrophic. A satellite image of a big river, and now flooding its plain. Another river as it should be. And here, in full flood. By imaging the extent of floodplains, Satellites help planners combat one of the greatest natural calamities on Earth. Satellites keep an eye on volcanoes. Not an eruption goes unrecorded. Vigilance that builds clues about future eruptions. And contour mapping that shows places at risk from ash and lethal flows. A volcanic peak from satellite then, with eruption points as hotspots, a heat image. Satellites detect volcanic emissions. 
Particles from a major eruption are tracked through the stratosphere. They can cool our climate by a degree or two. A man-made disaster as a tanker burns. An oil slick threatens coast and wildlife. It's observed from orbit and the slick precisely tracked. First, it's a snake. Then it breaks up. Satellites warn where oil will come ashore. Forest fires, often maliciously set, threaten people and property. From space, the fires are clear. So is the dying down, and so is the damage. In the United States, West Coast fires send smoke as far as the Great Lakes. A satellite studies how forest fires pollute the global atmosphere. Red shows increased levels of carbon monoxide. And there's concern at the effect of traffic pollutants, not just at street level, but globally. The same goes for factory chimneys. Satellites are watching. Our atmosphere and cloud cover are slowly changing. That seems to affect the way sunlight is absorbed, reflected and re-radiated. And that means climate change. In parts of Africa, it's getting drier. Satellite images show Lake Chad drying out. Strip by strip, over many years, satellites have scanned the planet. They've built a picture of climate change. And in the stratosphere, a depleted ozone layer. The layer protects us from ultraviolet rays, and it's developed a hole over Antarctica. Tropical rainforests are the lungs of the planet, absorbing gases like carbon dioxide. But tree felling is shrinking those lungs. Great tracts of forest are being cleared for development. Satellites record the burning. They show how quickly forest becomes farm and factory. Each minute, one and a half hectares is lost. And when tree roots go, especially on slopes, topsoil and fertility follow. Climate change is raising sea levels. And with oceans stormier, coastal communities are threatened. Satellites measure sea levels with impressive accuracy to within four centimeters. It's important because wave height reveals temperature. Warm water rides higher than cold and satellites unveil the seafloor. For oceans aren't flat. They have contours that mimic the profile beneath. Measure the surface and you see the floor. On average, oceans are four kilometers deep and they store heat. In the top two meters alone, there's more heat than in the whole atmosphere. From satellite, a temperature map of the Pacific. Warm water in red is blown well away from South America but periodically, easterly trade winds slacken. That's the time of El Nino. A huge finger of warm water trails west across the Pacific. The result is storms and floods in some regions, severe drought in others. In Australia, it means crop failure. With climate change, a concern is that melting ice will raise sea levels. Pack ice is no worry, it's already floating. So satellites monitor land ice in Antarctica and Greenland. Ice sheet thickness is logged, and so are icebergs that break away. Melting Greenland ice could reduce sea salinity and disrupt currents, and badly cool northern Europe. Satellites will see. Whether in red and blue for climate research, in green and blue for taking ocean temperatures. In green and white for studies of snow and ice. Or in red and yellow for scanning vegetation.